I guess so the first thing we'll do with this machine is uh, drop the oil on it. I don't have oil or filter yet, but I just want to get it to start draining. So I just uh, lifted the dipstick out so that it can drain well. I did some reaching underneath the vehicle and the uh, drain plug is on the center of the uh, oil pan, like facing the front. So it's on a bit of an angle, it's not facing up and down, it's kind of facing forward. This part of the machine appears to be strong enough to uh, jack it up. This is a three-ton jack. You can see it's uh, quite a bit heavier at the back of the machine. It's not lifting the whole thing. That's all right. I'm just gonna scoot around here and grab a couple blocks of wood. You're not gonna find a jack stand for this. If you work on these machines in pits, or on, uh, they have a ramps that they can drive up on. We don't have any of that stuff here. See, four by sixes came from a, a pallet that was cut up. It's a large pallet. show you what I've got going on here. Hopefully that's enough. I can just put it down. It's sort of on the, the front of the machine. There's lots of structure. So put that down and see what happens. access to get the uh, oil pan underneath there, the edge pan. Not much space. So that's in there. I'm just going to drain this. It's going to be a bit of a struggle. It feels like it's like a, a larger bolt on there, maybe a 19 or 17. So I'll get that out and then we'll take a look at it. Can't believe it. It was a 22 millimeter for the drain plug. So anyway, I guess they like doing high-speed oil changes on their forklifts. So, got that draining. I'm going to try to get the catch pan where I can do the oil filter at the same time. I'm just going to destroy this oil filter. Someone put it on way too tight. And uh, that's just the way it's going to be. You kind of need to just put pressure on it until the o-ring lets go, but gasket. No doubt you can't see anything. You'll know much better. Well, yeah, put a hole in it anyway. <laughs> He's not turning. I'll put a filter on like this. All right, because it's a Fram, you can't even put a tool on the end of it because it's got that grip crap on it. Just over tighten. So I'll get this thing off, then we'll get on to the next step. All right, we've got the oil filter out. That's the aftermath of it being too tight, which is unfortunate because I wanted to cut it open using a. Uh, a tube cutter, but that's not going to work because this thing is all mushed. So I got to find a way to get this thing open. I didn't feel anything in the oil. The oil looks fine, but because of the oil light, I do want to take a look inside the filter and see what's going on. And this filter is like five years old, so it'll tell me a lot about the machine. So we'll try to get this thing opened up. All right, I guess we'll make an attempt to cut this open with some uh, tin snips. These ones cut a, a slot out as you go, so I'll probably have to start by spearing this filter somewhere. The hardest part is getting going.
Oh, a mess. This doesn't need to be this hard. Ah, at least we're getting it done. This is convenient if you need to snip a section of duct work. Anyway, you get the idea. So we'll get this thing apart and then we'll take a look at it. I already got the filter apart. This was uh, actually inside of it. This came off when I was taking the filter off of the machine. This tube goes on to the uh, center of the uh, filter adapter there. I don't know if you can see that in there or not. But keep an eye out for that. You wouldn't want to uh, lose it. I'm just I'm poking around. I can't say that I can see it. Hopefully you can. So anyway, that uh, is a part you'll be needing to look for when you do an oil change on one of these machines. Luckily it hasn't been done on this machine too often so it hasn't been lost yet. And then uh, the filter looks good. When you look inside the pleats there's no metal in there. It smells like gas though. So the choke is being used way too much. So that uh, tells you that. Oil is... that's yeah, oil. So anyway, got that apart, got the oil drained. Now we'll have to uh, get some oil to put in which will so be on another day. So we'll take a look at that in uh, the next little while. Thanks. So we keep picking away at it. So that's the uh, fuel filter. It has a little spring and uh, filter element. There's no markings on it, unfortunately. So it's going to be hard to match up. But it looks like it's in good condition, so I might just put it back in. And there's the bowl, which sits upside down. And this little contraption here. So another thing I did was I pulled out the uh, oil pressure dummy switch. It's not a real pressure sender per se. Again, no real markings on it. It says made in Japan on it. And I had to use uh, just a pair of uh, plumber's pliers there to uh, get that out of there. So it kind of tore it up. So I'll probably see if there's another place I can put a mechanical gauge just so I can view it and then I'll get another one of these. It does say like 120 beside the made in Japan. I don't know if that's enough to go off of or not. It's hard to tell with an industrial engine, like I can't go to the car store and tell them I need something for a Nissan car because it may not be the case. And uh, you can maybe see the uh, fuel bowl there. So there's a little fuel tap you can turn off the gasoline before you crack that open. So it's pretty easy to work on. And uh, so I'll put that back on and we'll see what we do next after that. I don't know if you can see the uh, filter there. It looked like I had the spring in the wrong position initially when I was showing it to you. So there doesn't appear to be a drain for that cavity so I clean it out with a, a cloth or a bit of rest residue in it. It's also the uh, fuel pump right there. It's a mechanical pump. So I've got that sitting up right uh, the way I think it's supposed to go now. Alright, so I started to take apart the uh, dash here to take a look at uh, if I can polish that up or not. And of course, the uh, Phillips head screws, one of them went bad on me. So I had to drill it out and use a, a screw extractor. So that uh, worked pretty good. Alright, so it's been a couple of days now since I started the oil change. I got the uh, filter on. I put on a new uh, pressure switch in behind it, which you may or may not be able to see. Not too significant. So it ended up, I got one from CarQuest, but I would recommend getting it from like a forklift company because I paid like $30 for this one. They're only worth about five. So, but this part does work. It's a uh, Nissan part number. And then uh, I had the cluster out. So you take the uh, screws out. I ended up running an M6 by one tap through the holes after I got them out. And uh, just to clean them up, put in new uh, bolts. To get the uh, cover off, you have to take the uh, circuit board out. There's a few uh, Phillips screws on the back of that and then a few more to hold this in. So it's uh, not too bad of a job. You do have to uh, unscrew the clutch cable. So you have to put like a pair of pliers on the uh, rod here so you can unscrew this and then unscrew that part. Then take out uh, the ignition switch. Then there's some more wiring underneath that you got to take out as well. 
while I was working on it, I found that the uh, wiring on the uh, cab over here on that side was all corroded. The uh, connectors were all fossilized and falling apart. And uh, there was no voltage on two of the four fuses. So I re-crimped some of the uh, cables going into the fuse. Then I eliminated the four wire connector and put two two wire connectors on in its place. And uh, all I can say I really got from that is that the headlights sort of work now. I had used some uh, brake cleaner on this switch. And uh, I can get these uh, two lights on. I can't get any of the uh, turn signals to work yet. I have to carry on with the diagnosis there not working on the back. So for uh, oil you can see I used the Rotella T4 15W40. It should be fine. Like the uh, This thing was made in like 88 to 91. And I'm sure this is much better than the oil made back then. I used the 5 liter jug and between the engine and the filter and this uh, guy here which I'm going to use to lubricate the lifting chains. That's 5 liters. This thing is empty now. The uh, service manual showed up for it and uh, it's alright it's got the wiring diagrams in it and some uh, specs as well it's a it's a pretty good manual but it doesn't tell you what kind of fluids to use so you need to have the owner's manual for that so like I said you need to have three manuals for this thing in order to take care of it properly I've got a, a belt here hopefully this one works I just uh, Looked up on like a Nissan H20, and uh, hopefully that's uh, the right one. We'll know shortly. The uh, two spin-on filters have different uh, threads on them, which is good. So that's what I use for the engine oil, and then this is going to be for the uh, transmission. So like I said, they're different threads. They're very similar looking, but they don't interchange, so that's good. Don't need to worry about that. Trying to think if there's anything else that we did. Yeah, I'm happy to say that the oil pressure sender works now. So I'll run the vehicle or the engine here a little bit later. Well, when I had this out, what I did was I just used a, a brand new clean paintbrush, brushed off all the dials and everything, and discovered that only the first two of these, this light bar actually does anything. So there's the engine oil and then the uh, voltage. There can be a whole bunch of other ones, but this vehicle or machine wasn't optioned out with any of them. So there's only the two. Now the circuit board is not conformally coated or anything, so it's in pretty bad shape. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get to get the fuel or the water temp to work correctly. In the manual, it does tell you the uh, ohm range for the fuel sender. I think it's between uh, 0 and 80 ohms, roughly. So that's uh, good, I can diagnose that. I didn't see the water temperature in there, but it might be under the engine section, perhaps. But uh, I'll be able to do some uh, playing around with the resistor and see what I can figure out to see if we can get the water temperature to work. If not, we'll have to either buy a new circuit board or get a new uh, aftermarket gauge set to put on this thing. I prefer if it just is all original. I don't really want to add anything to this machine. So we'll see what the pricing is and how things turn out. Horn doesn't work yet, so I'll have to work on that wiring. Now that I've got the wiring diagram, that'll help. It seems like the machine is wired for most of the aftermarket, uh, or not optional gauges. <clears throat> like the loose wire that I found near the transmission actually would go to a transmission temperature sender. So that's why it was where it was, and then it seems like everything is good to go. You just have to add what you want, but then the gauge cluster would have to be replaced as well. So uh, it's a bit of a mystery, but I'll, eventually I'll figure it out once I get the parts manual. And we'll go over that in a little bit more detail, depending on what the cost of these things are. And I uh, confirmed that there's a missing uh, a brake cable, so I need to get one of those. So I guess we'll uh, open up the garage. I picked some fans up here. Hopefully they don't catch on fire. They're pretty cheap. And uh, get this thing going and then we'll change the air filter. I've got one of those here somewhere too. And uh, I guess we'll wrap up the video after that.
All right, so let's see if we can get this thing to start. I'm always used to running glow plugs. I'm more of a diesel person. So pull out the clutch a little bit. It kind of holds. You see the pressure will, will build up. Well, I need a starter. So that's a success. Uh, oil pressure sender is working good. It just grounds out when the uh, pressure is low. But if it, it was leaking oil like through the body of the sender, so that kind of tells you what the problem was. If it's ever leaking through the body of the sender, you know that it's failed internally. So I guess this is sort of where we're gonna wrap up this video. I'm gonna warm it up and then we'll have some more videos uh, afterwards. So thank you for watching.